hey guys welcome back to my channel for this video i'm going to be continuing the series of multiple choice questions and i thank you for liking sharing subscribing commenting inviting your friends guys i really appreciate you let's get right into it so the first question we're given a parabola and you know a parabola is basically a quadratic function the shape of your par parabola is it helps to determine if it's a positive if it's a positive a value or a negative a value all right and so once a value is positive you know that will give you a smiley face if the a is negative it will give you a frown all right so as is as is we see it's a positive a the general form here given is a x square plus bx minus c all right so we're asked to find the value of c in the parabola above the value of C is basically where this line or this graph or some would say this function cuts the y-axis and the value of C here is a negative 6. Alright, so the value of C is negative 6. The next question asks, what is the equation of the parabola in the form, I assume, given y equal ax squared plus bx minus c? All right, so there are a few things we can do here. We can first identify the roots that were given in the question. And the root is basically where the this graph cuts the x-axis. So the roots here, we have 1 as 2 and the second one as negative 3. Well, we know that a parabola in this factorized form is y is equal to a x minus p in bracket x minus q so having p anyone can be called p anyone q having p negative 3 and q to be um 2 we can replace it into that so y is equal to a x minus minus 3 y minus 3 because of negative 3 for p times x minus q which is basically 2 all right, so here we can simplify and we can go ahead and find the value of a. So let's continue. So y is equal to a x plus 3 x minus 2. To find the value of a, we know x is equal to 0 because on the graph we have a point given as the, as the intercept or, the, or a coordinate 0, 6 for the, um, the y-intercept coordinate. So when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 6. So let's put it in this, what we're given. So 6 is equal to a 0 plus 3, 0 minus 2. You simplify that, you have 3 times a negative 2, which will give you a negative 6a. To find the value of a, you divide by negative 6 on both sides. So this is a negative 6, my bad. You divide by negative 6 on both sides. So that cancels. So a is equal to positive 1. So we know a is 1, we can go ahead and find the, the, the equation in the form y equal ax squared plus bx minus c. In this case, putting a into the given one. You can put it into this one or you can go back to the initial one. I'm going to use this one. So y is equal to 1 times x plus 3 x minus 2. Let's simplify this. 1 times anything is the same thing. And so we have x plus 3, x minus 2. Here we're we'll using FOIL method to simplify the bracket by distributing first outer inner last. So it's going to be x squared, x, x squared, x times negative 2, negative 2x. X, 3 times x is a positive 3x. 3 times a negative 2 is a negative 6. So y is equal to x squared plus x minus 6. And that's our answer. So x squared minus plus x minus 6 is basically c. All right. So if we were not given the, the value of, um, if we were just given x squared plus x minus c, we could have simply got the answer from here. But seeing this graph, we don't know if a is greater than 1 or less than 1. So we, that's why I went through that method just now. Let's move on to the next question. So given that the axis of symmetry 
x equal 3, determine the vertex of the function y equal x squared minus 6x plus 5. So we know the axis of symmetry is basically the midpoint of the two roots. So if you're given a graph like this, all right, so let's say the roots are, so positive 5, negative, th let me just say something. Let's say the roots are 2 and, negative 2 and 2. The midpoint of negative 2 and 2 here would be 0. So 0, the line, the y-axis here would be your axis of symmetry. So that's the midpoint between the two roots. So given that, we know we need to know the, the y-value that's basically the, the turning point right here. So having said that, we can substitute the value of x into the given function to find the y-value. So x equals 3, that means in, in this function we see x, we're going to be replacing that with 3. So y is equal to 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 5. All right, let's continue. So x is equal to 3, so 3 squared is 9. Negative 6 times 3 is a negative 18 plus 5. 9 plus 5 is 14. Minus 18 results in a negative 4. And so the vertex here would be the minimum the minimum value, or we can say the turning point. All right, so the vertex would be x negative 3, x equal, not to, x equal 3, and y is equal to a negative 4. And we know um, coordinates have x, y values. x values come first, then the y. So it's a 3, negative 4, which is this question, which is that one. All right, so in, the, in a bag, there are five red marbles, four yellow marbles, and three green mar um, three green balls. If one is chosen at random, what's the probability that it is not green? We know here we're talking about probability, and so probability of any, probability of A is equal to the favorable outcome over the, to over the, over the total possible outcome, or some would say the sample space. All right, so the total possible outcome. So first we need to know how many, how many balls are we dealing with. So right here we have 5, 4, and 3. So if you want, you can basically add them. 5 plus 4 plus 3 will result in 12. So we have 12 possible outcomes, all right? And so it says not green. So not green will represent 3 out of, 3 out of 12 right here. So if it's not green... 3 out of 12 represents green. So not green would be the whatever is left from that. So we know the whole, the entire thing is 1. And say 12 out of 12, that's up to you. Put it in the denominator. So 1 or 12 out of 12. And not green represents 3 out of the 12. Green represents 3 out of the 12. So it's going to be subtract 3 over 12. Or subtract 3 over 12. So not green will result in 9 over 12. All right? So basically, one subtract probability of green. And 3 of 12 can be reduced to 3 over 4, which is 3 quarter. And that's how we get it for this one. All right, so probability of not green is basically one subtract the probability of green. Let's move on to the next question. So the mean of 11 number, numbers is 9. One of the numbers is 19 is deleted. The mean of the remaining numbers, I don't know what I have, is R. So we know that mean is equal to the sum of f of x divided by n, or some would say f. It doesn't matter. So the sum of all the numbers divided by the number of possible items that are there, the possible numbers so the mean given is nine so the mean is nine total numbers in it were 11 so we don't know what f of x is all right so we can multiply by 11 on both sides to find the value of f of x so f of x is equal to 99 and this is basically the sum of all the numbers given so to find they say one number was taken on that was 19. So 19 was taken on so the subtract 19 from the total 
So 99 subtract 19 would give you 80. All right? So no, the, the f of x, the new f of x is now 80. And they said the number of, the mean for the remaining number is, so once one number is taken out, the n is, n was 11, n is no longer 11, n is now 10 because one number was taken out, so 11 subtract 1 to give you 10. To find the new mean, it's going to be f of x divided by n, and f of x is now 80, so it's 80 divided by n, which is 10. 80 divided by 10 is equal to 8. All right, guys, so let me know if you want some more of these questions. I am happy to source them for you. Remember, I don't work with CXC, but I can find these questions in books and most places that I search for them. All right, remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, and tell a friend about me. Let them come and learn something because the exams are coming up and we have to pass it. All right, so stay tuned for more videos.